Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome, my name is Brandi Peters. If you've never seen my face before, I am a content marketing strategist and what I do is help cool people like you market and sell using content and social media. Now, if you're watching this video today, I'm gonna go out on a limb and assume that you have been trying in some capacity to market yourself and your business using Instagram. You might be someone who spends a lot of time on Instagram. You might also be someone who spends very little time on Instagram. But either way, you are frustrated because no matter how hard you try, you have yet to actually get leads or make sales from the marketing that you're doing on Instagram. And you might be a little confused because you're probably hearing everybody talk about how great Instagram is for promoting business and yet it's not working and it's not happening for you and you can't figure out why. You might wonder why nobody engages with your posts, why your follower count doesn't grow, but most importantly you're wondering why you're not really getting anything back from the time that you're spending using Instagram. So if this is you, you're in the right place. I have put together this training. This actually used to be a training that I sold. It was called my Instagram leads and sales training, but I've decided to offer it as a freebie just for you. And I want to give you as much information as possible. So when you walk away, I can promise you that if you implement the things that we talk about here in the next 30 minutes, you will see an improvement in the results that you're getting. You will be able to use Instagram more strategically. We are going to go from dabbling to strategizing. That is the purpose of this teaching, this training. This is not going to be one of those webinars where it is just 10 minutes of information and then a long sales pitch. This is a full blown training. So, get comfy. We've got some work to do. This is not live, so you may work through this at your own pace. If you do have questions for me, you can still direct those to me once you've watched the training or if you get stuck at any point. But again, this is not live. This is pre-recorded, but I just want you to know you can still ask questions to me and I want you to get the most value that you possibly can from this training. So I have included as well a nice workbook that you can use that will help you actually start to implement some of the things that we're talking about. And again, stay with me. Stay with me until the end because that's where the most juicy information is going to be. So stick with me until the end. I promise it's going to be good stuff all the way through. But at the end, I'm going to tell you the one thing, the one thing that you need to start doing that is going to make a huge difference in the results you actually get from Instagram. All right, now that I've talked it up and got you all excited, we are going to dive right into a screen share. I have some slides I want to go through with you. There's going to be a lot of me talking in this. I apologize. And then there'll be a few walkthroughs where I actually can show you what I'm talking about. So get comfy, grab a drink. Let's do this. It's going to be lots of fun. There's lots of good information here. All right. Okay, so how to use Instagram for marketing in a way that will actually get you results. And by results, I mean leads, increased revenue, and loyal customers. Yes, we are talking about content marketing. So this is the marketing of your business, whatever it is that you do using content. But this is not one of those Instagram trainings where we talk about taking pretty pictures. We are going to talk about the actual strategy behind Instagram. We're not talking about what you're going to post. We're going to talk about how you're posting and how you're using Instagram, your Instagram business profile in order to reach new customers. So I'm going to start with a quick introduction, let you get to know me a little bit better, talk about what I do and why I love Instagram and why you should love Instagram today and right now. Like, if you haven't started using Instagram and you're watching this and you're just getting the information before you do anything with it, then I'm going to give you a pretty a good argument about why you need to care about Instagram if you have a business, any type of business today. Who I am? Well, I'm Brandy Peters. I said that at the beginning. I'm a social media marketing strategist. 
I started working online in 2012 and I've been at this now for seven years. My first online business was a content writing business where I would write website copy and I did mostly SEO as well as content marketing and funnel marketing. So a lot of sales pages, a lot of landing pages. I also worked as a blogger for hire. So I did a lot of commercial blogging, writing reviews, writing SEO copy. And I did that until 2016. And in 2016, I decided I'm done with content writing. I'm going to become a content strategist and a consultant. At that time, I was pretty naive about the amount of work I could actually handle on my own. And if you've ever been in the boat where you basically signed yourself up as a human Swiss army knife, I realized really quickly there was just too many things to do. And if I wanted to continue to be a solo entrepreneur, I was going to have to niche and I was going to have to niche myself so hard. So I did that and I became a Facebook ad strategist. And as a Facebook ad strategist, I created a business, Facebook growth hack ads, growthhackads.com. That is a Facebook ads on demand service where you can get creative copy and strategized ads from an experienced strategist on demand without a retainer. I still run that business, but it was through that business I started to see things shift and I started to get really interested in Instagram. When Facebook rolled out Instagram ads, I was like, hmm, now this is something new. This is something interesting. This is something exciting for me to dive into. So I spent a year in the back end of things while running growth hack ads, focusing on growing my own Instagram following, which I took to, it is now at 13K, so 13,000 followers in under a year using all sorts of different growth hacking techniques. Um, So after I did that, I put out my Instagram growth hacking guide, which you may sign up for. It is my step-by-step technique of growing my Instagram where I documented and shared what you actually need to do to increase the number of impressions you reach using basically good engagement techniques to increase your reach. Very similar stuff has what you will find with Facebook, but basically hacking the algorithm to get more reach, grow your following really fast on Instagram. And so I put that out and I started to build what is now my Brandy Peters brand, but it is Instagram marketing. And I am now fully invested in Instagram and sharing Instagram. And there are some good reasons why I have shifted away from Facebook and gone all in with Instagram. So as I said, I've been doing this since 2012. I started out as a content writer. I niched to Facebook ads, and then I decided that Instagram was going to be my main jam. And here's the reason why. Instagram really is the most relevant social media platform out there. There are 1 billion daily users. I know that is freaking staggering, but there are tons of people on Instagram. Instagram has an incredible amount of users every single day. Now with Facebook, there are a lot of people signed up, but the daily usership is actually pretty low. Everybody has a Facebook profile, but not everybody goes on Facebook every day anymore. And the demographic for Facebook has really shifted to women 25 plus. So you're missing a huge audience group when you're focusing your energy only on Facebook. Instagram is a platform that thrives in niches, meaning that everybody with every sort of different kind of interest is on Instagram. This is really exciting because it allows us to create really targeted strategies for attracting people. I talk about Instagram like this. I say, well, Instagram really is all about matching content to an audience. If you know your audience and you know what kind of content they follow on Instagram, you're going to do okay by creating that content to attract that audience. Instagram is all about niches and we'll talk about that some more. Extremely localized targeting. I mean, Instagram, you can have extremely strategized targeting in all niches, but if you're a local business, you can have great local targeting. Now, again, I know you have that on Facebook, but 
with Instagram, you have more people using the platform, active on the platform. So a higher number of impressions, more activity, more engagement, more opportunity to reach people in your local area using Instagram. Another thing I like about Instagram is the high CPC. So, well, low CPC, high conversions. Low CPC, high conversions. So cost per conversion is good on Instagram. It's lower than it is on Facebook. Facebook ads have become very saturated, very competitive. And a lot of the ad space on Facebook has been bought up by people with larger budgets. You're gonna get better results. You're gonna get higher conversions, lower cost if you run ads on Instagram. And that for me as someone who was doing Facebook ads and was seeing things get more and more competitive, I was like, hmm, this is interesting. Instagram's not as saturated. The advertising space is not as saturated. It's still pretty new for being a place where business owners can advertise. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about Instagram ads because there's actually a lot of opportunity there, even if you are a small business or a local business or a new business or someone who's doing nonprofit or someone who's doing content marketing. So say you're trying to grow a podcast or build an email list or build your YouTube channel. Instagram is a platform where if you're investing any type of money into your content to promote your content, you're going to get more bang for your buck than Facebook. People are really fed up with seeing advertising on Facebook, but Instagram, it seems to be more agreed with. It seems to be more targeted and you tend to get better results again. So again, less competitive than Facebook ads. And then, and this is something, whether you're doing paid ads or you're not interested in doing paid ads, you should keep in mind organic discoverability. So organic discoverability, the ability for people to find out about you and discover you out of the blue is much higher. Instagram has more opportunities for people to come across your content, fall in love with you and stick around as a follower. There's not as much of that on Facebook. People aren't really following Facebook pages. Facebook is largely about connecting with people and things that you're already aware of. Discoverability on Instagram, the opportunity for discoverability is much higher. So now we're going to talk about Instagram. And if you're using Instagram for marketing, these might be some of the things that you would say to me. These are the things that people say to me when we talk about Instagram marketing. I spend a lot of time on Instagram, but I'm not getting anything back. I'm putting a lot of effort into my content, but I don't get any reach. I want more followers, likes, and engagement, but you're focusing on the wrong things and you're not looking at insights, reach, or impressions. This is usually the story that people tell me when they come to me looking for help with Instagram. They're frustrated. Again, we addressed at the beginning, you might be frustrated. This might be why you're watching this. And we're going to address each of these things. And I want to turn things around for you. That is my end goal here. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about these common Instagram marketing mistakes. This is a good introduction to what you need to be doing if you're doing these instead, if you want to turn things around. So like I said, when you walk away from this, you should be able to immediately implement these changes and see an improvement in the results you get day to day, no matter how much or how little time you're spending on Instagram. So the first most common mistake I would definitely say is content dumping. Now, if you're guilty of this, I'm not here to pick on you. I'm not here to make you feel bad, but you need to stop this behavior. This is when you post on Instagram, but then you do not interact or engage with anybody else's content on the Instagram platform. So you just log in, post whatever your post is for the day and then take off and you know go run your business because you've got more important things to do you post and you run you're not interacting you're not building community you're not networking or looking for people who might be interested you are literally posting and running now there's different extremes in which people do this but with busy business owners this is very common the content dumping habit. It runs deep. It is deeply embedded in you. You want to be productive in your day and spending a whole bunch of time on Instagram is just not a priority for you. I get it. But again, if you want to have organic results, non-paid results, you're going to have to stop. You're going to have to stop. Um, this is something that is really bad for your account as a whole because you're going to be viewed as spam. 
Now, I know if you're thinking, I put a lot of effort into my content, how could it possibly be spam? Well, the algorithm doesn't care how much effort you put into your content. If you just log in once a day and post something up there, or you just use a pre-scheduler and post something, it's not giving you reach because the Instagram algorithm's goal is to show people the content that show people the content that they're most interested in seeing and if you're someone who doesn't interact within the network then they're just considering your content spam and therefore you're not going to be getting the reach that you want so my suggestions to cut out those bad content dumping behaviors engage on more content than you yourself are posting so every time you post go and interact with people who comment on your posts so as soon as you post hang out for a little bit and as you see those initial engagements rolling in pop over to their profile and give them a little bit of love as well do this for a good amount of time on a regular basis and to take it another step further ask questions to drive conversation and you want to be building relationships social media is about actually being social with the people who interact and follow you if they engage with you engage back with them it will pay off in the end Another thing you can do to stop content dumping is actually do something I call hashtag surfing. So the hashtags that you've actually chosen for your Instagram post, you're going to want to actually click those and scroll through them and actually engage, meaning like and comment on posts that use the same hashtags that you've used. Now, the reason why you want to be doing this is because when a stranger interacts with your post, the first thing you usually do is go and check out their profile, see what they're all about. If the content matches your interests, then you'll likely follow them back. So you want to be increasing the traffic flow to your main profile view. And the way that you do this is interacting with people outside of your own Instagram profile. Hashtag surfing is a great way to do that. It's also a good habit to get into. Less is more when it comes to hashtags. Use hashtags that you're actually going to click and go on and interact with people on and do this regularly. Make it part of your Instagram usage, your Instagram habits and behaviors. Now, the last thing you can do to improve your content dumping is to scroll your feed and leave comments on your audience posts. Now, this is going to keep creating those reciprocal relationships where, oh, they comment on my stuff, I comment on theirs. This is really important for keeping you alive and prioritized with the Instagram algorithm so that Instagram actually shows your posts the people you follow and who follow you. So this is really good. So make sure that you do that. You actually leave comments on your audience's posts and show them that you're not just there for yourself. It works on kind of an emotional level of building connections in a really genuine and authentic way. It works on a technical level of creating that relationship with the algorithm. So when you post, it says, hey, these two people have a relationship. We need to show this post to them. Does that make sense? I hope that clears that up. That's why it's important that you engage on more content than you are actually posting. And if you have been spending a lot of time on Instagram, focusing more on the content that you're producing, try to focus more on these activities and maybe post a little less. Maybe you're only posting once or twice a week, but you're doing this every single day for an hour. That's going to make a huge difference in how things go for you on Instagram. I promise. I swear by it. All right, so the next common mistake on Instagram is being too self-promotional. Now, I know you just want to spread the word about what you do, and you really believe in your business, and you want other people to believe in your business, but if you are using Instagram as your own personal billboard, and all you post is marketing content, then not only are you getting kind of sanctioned and reached by the algorithm, you might actually be putting people off. What you want to do is try to offer people value, give them something to chew on, but you don't need to sell all the time. So here are my suggestions to improve this habit. If this is a bad habit you have and this is preventing you from getting results, show them, don't tell them. So show them what you do, what your business is about, what your brand values are, don't tell them. Don't tell them how great you are. If they're following you, they followed you for a reason. They know you're a business by now. They should know you're a business. You're, you're making that clear, I hope. Now what you want to do is show them what you're all about. So adopt an attitude of business storytelling. Show them what is going on in your business day to day and behind the scenes. You can do this. You can do this using your stories and your main feed content it's the story of your business so if your business was a person and it had a personal instagram 
what is it sharing on there? What is it all about? What does it love? What does it do? What's going on? Um, if you're building a personal brand, again, just tell your story of growing your business. I like to describe it this way, where you are, where you're going and where you came from. Those are the things you want to share with your audience and share them regularly. Like you always want to go back and tell your origin story and reinforce your passion points and reinforce what you do. But again, without being like, hey, come buy from me, without being promotional, more so just talking about it in a positive way that people are going to catch on and it's going to be clear and obvious without having to be in your face. Um, I talk about this a lot when I'm working with people, the difference between conventional advertising, so print advertising, where what is for sale is basically just explained and presented versus content marketing, where you're creating content that represents what you do and it indirectly promotes your business. So it's less in your face, but it's meant for a long-term audience warming, long-term customer warming and building that loyalty. Whoa, back on track here. So let's talk about another strategy for showing and not telling is to post tips, advice, and information. So we're giving value, content that is useful to your audience, whether they're borrowing from you or not. If someone's signing up, you want to think of them as they are subscribing to you. They're saying, I'm going to follow this content. So you want to offer value to them so that they continue to follow you. And people, people do not like to sign up to be advertised to guys. Like people don't want to see more commercials. They want to see content and they want content that's on topic to the things that they're interested in. So again, matching an audience to content is what Instagram's about. So again, this helps you establish yourself as an expert. You don't need to tell them how great you are. They're going to know how great you are because you're showing them by offering value in the form of content. There's all sorts of ways you can post content on Instagram, short videos, little slides. So multi-image posts, regular image posts. You've got stories, you've got Instagram live, you've got IGTV, tons of places to put content. But what you're doing in that content is not necessarily selling. It is showing, not telling. It is teaching. It is adding value. Okay, so again, like I mentioned before, try to start thinking of a follower, or someone following you, or someone who has subscribed to see content from you. They have said, hey, this is interesting to me. I liked that post. I want to see more of what this profile puts out there. They are subscribing to you when they follow. So you want to respect that and you want to give them more of the same. Um, so start thinking your followers, people have subscribed to see your content, you content. Oh, look at me with a typo in this slide. All right, moving on. Let's talk about consistency. So again, consistency in your message, consistency in the content that you're putting up. But most importantly, they're signing up to see something very specific from you. Instagram thrives in niches, so try to stay on topic. If that means you have multiple Instagram accounts that are each for a different topic, then so be it. Instagram is going to be easier for you if you set a main topic or theme for your profile and stay on that topic. You're also going to grow more quickly because it's going to be obvious to people what that profile is all about and what it's for, what they can expect from it. So consistency is important here. Stay on topic. Make sure the topic matches the audience that you're trying to target and that you're using, like I said before, the different behaviors of reaching people who are going to be interested in your content. So you are engaging with more content than you post, but engaging with the right types of content that matches your content to drive traffic back to your profile and increase the number of followers you get, but also make sure you're building an actually engaged audience, people who are interested in the theme of your Instagram profile. All right, so moving into the third one, and now this is going to segue us into a whole new conversation about what you need to be doing differently on Instagram to generate leads and sales. And here it is, and here's one that I feel very passionately about. There is no point for lead capture designed into your Instagram marketing strategy. So you might have people on there, some of you, I know this is the case, you have people on there who engage with you, who interact on your posts, but you have not been able to convert them into a customer. And this is why there's no lead capture designed into, there's no like purpose or point. So it's just content for content's sake. 
content for content's sake, constant interaction and engagement. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's like just, you know, you're kind of flirting with each other, but you haven't actually asked them out on a date, that kind of thing. If you feel like you've got that going on, this is what's probably happening for you. You don't have anything in place to get your leads to a self-qualified point where they identify themselves as a potential customer that doesn't exist within your strategy. You might not even have a strategy and therefore you do not have this system in place. And so you're not really able to measure your success or non-success of what's going on with your Instagram. So here are the basics of lead capture when it comes to Instagram. People self-qualify, meaning that they identify themselves as someone who is interested in learning more about what you do or what you sell. You can get people to opt into a list for further remarketing so you can sell to them later and provide more value to them through content. You can run targeted ads to people who are engaging with you and your content in a way that indicates that they're interested in buying. So if you have people who are kind of like said, flirting, tiptoeing around, like you feel like, you know, we've got, we've got chemistry. Why, why haven't we sealed the deal? Well, you need to have this in place so that you can do that. And you can do that in a very strategic, automated, systemized way where again, you're not spamming or selling all the time. Like this can all happen for you really naturally. It, it can just be set up to happen for you organically and naturally in a way that nobody feels bad about what's going on. So where do you get people to do this? Well, there are two places where you could get someone to click a link opt in, be added to your email marketing list or added to an automated sequence where the end result is possibly a call with you or the sale of a low ticket introductionary product or take them directly to your shop or store but they are armed with a nice incentive or discount. So there are two places where you can do this where you can share links and take people outside of the world of Instagram and to another landing point to opt themselves in, sign themselves up and then be taken to um, another point in your sales process. So the first one, and this is the one that is more like, oh, we're going to have light bulb moments, you guys, is your bio link. Okay. So we're going to talk more about this, but your bio link, I would say it's possibly the most valuable place on Instagram. It is the one place where you can take people to a landing point where they can opt in and be added to your list for further remarketing. And you don't need to use ads to take people there. You just need to let them know that there's a free gift for them in your link. That is the most important point in your whole Instagram. You want to take people to your bio link where you have set things up so that they can claim some sort of gift or incentive offer from you, be added to an automation sequence, again, email marketing, or just through an automated sequence of emails where the end result is like either, like I said, a low ticket product, um, some kind of call where you get on a call and consult with them, um, discovery calls, if that's how you sell. Um, if you are in e-commerce, you wanna put in your bio link some kind of unique um, offer that your people can, can claim, sorry, um, that they can actually claim. So you want to do like a promo code, free shipping, $5 off for Instagram followers only. Click here, they have to put their email in, they receive that promo code and then it directs them back to the store. Anything that's going to collect them onto a list for further remarketing, but also basically get them into your sales process. So they go from just being curious about your Instagram content into your sales sequences. And then the other one, and I'm sorry, like I've kind of underemphasized this, but this one is powerful too. This is the DM inbox. Okay, so we're gonna slide on into their DMs, but there's a right way and a wrong way to do this, and we're gonna talk about that right now. All right, so first of all, I talked about the bio link. So we're going to put a freebie or a landing point. You can post whatever you post, direct people into that bio link. So what I mean is, no matter what the post is, say link in bio four, link in bio for blank, what is in your link in bio? This is what you wanna do. You wanna direct them to go and check that out and see what it is that you're offering them that they can then opt in for. The other place, as I mentioned, we're gonna talk about is this DM inbox sliding into their DMs. Now we're not gonna auto DM, we're not gonna set up that automation. It does more damage to your brand. Um, 
in the long run, having auto DMs is just going to mess things up. I don't think auto DMs make anybody happy. I think, frankly, they are the dick pic of the marketing world. Nobody is getting turned on by an auto DM. But what you can do with your DMs are offer people a free gift. So you can be like, hey, I have something for you. Are you interested in it? Just normal people conversation. You know, I have something. But what we're not doing is selling in the DM. We're actually offering them, again, that freebie, that gift, that incentive offer, whether it's a promo code, whether it's an information product like this, something of value to them. You can offer that to them in the DM inbox. When you guys are hanging out on Instagram in the front end, slide on into their DMs, send them a DM and say something like, hi, I have something for you. Or are you interested in this? Start a conversation. This is a no brainer. Be a person, be kind, start a conversation, get to know them and then offer them something of value once you've identified their interest in it. You just want to get their permission. I put this in here because I think it's really important, but spam is marketing without permission to market. So if you're like, I'm not a spammer, like I have good content, I don't view myself as a spammer. Well, you might be if you're auto DMing people and you're doing tons and tons of sales content, you actually are because you're putting stuff in front of people that they don't want to see. And the algorithm's designed to stomp that out, but also people themselves have a filter on that. They don't want it. So instead, think about it from the perspective of the person on the receiving end and ask their permission. If it's not clear to you whether or not this is appropriate to do it, it's probably not. But you can always just ask. My favorite thing to do is say, can I message you? If I feel like we're getting somewhere and they might be a potential customer for me, I say, can I message you? Like question mark. And if they say, yeah, sure, then I have permission to start a conversation about what I do with them. So keep that in mind. Spam is marketing without permission to market. And we don't wanna be spammers on Instagram. We wanna do things right. Don't be lazy. <laughs> you will get back the effort and energy that you put in. So obviously if you are putting in minimal effort into this and you are just basically dropping links and auto DMing and just posting content that is essentially just self-promotional garbage, um, you know, you're treating Instagram like your personal billboard, you're going to get that energy and effort back. You put in five seconds of energy into what you're doing on Instagram, you're going to get five seconds of energy back, which is usually a no thank you, a goodbye. So this is something that I like to tell my clients to do and I coach people on, be intentional in your actions and arrive with an attitude of, you know, this is for a very genuine connection. It's not just to mass market to whoever, like chasing followers, chasing people down. This doesn't really work. It doesn't like, it's just not the way to get customers. Now you can increase the amount of visibility you get Visibility will help people find you. So by matching yourself to potential customers, more potential customers are going to increase, increase, sorry, increase the odds of someone being interested. So more visibility, but connection in the end and the value that you bring is what's going to close. So don't be lazy. You'll get back the effort and energy that you put in. There's something I want to leave you guys to kind of stew on. But what's the difference really? Like what's the difference between what I'm talking about and what you might already be doing? Now, before you might have been something who was somebody who was just dabbling on Instagram, trying to see if you could get it to work. So you're just like liking and doing things and just, you know, basically screwing around and you're frustrated and unhappy because it's not happening for you. Now you can be spending your time on Instagram capturing people into a funnel that is strategically designed to convert them into customers now and in the long term. So if everybody is getting onto your email marketing list to get more content from you and they're self-qualifying and you're asking people, may I message you? And you're sending them content of value that they opt in for. So again, provide you with their email address. So they're added to a list for remarketing. Um, they're being captured as basically a potential customer so you can serve them more content and show your content to them in a custom audience. That is strategy, not just messing around, seeing what's going to happen, but focused strategy, intentional marketing, very intentional behaviors. 
but how? So how are you going to pull this off? Okay, so I've talked a lot about things you can do in theory, um, but here's what you actually need to do this. So you're going to need to create some kind of freebie or incentive offer. A freebie could be an information product like this. So it could be a webinar, some training materials, a resource that complements what you do or sell, establishes you as an expert, gets people, you know, kind of a taste, a teaser of what it'd be like to work with you, kind of get to know you a little bit. You can showcase your brand in that. So a freebie or information product. It may also, and like I said, with e-commerce, it may be an incentive offer. So e-commerce, local business, different types of businesses that are selling physical products, you can try offering something like a coupon or promo code. That's an incentive offer, something to entice people to opt in and they only get it when they do opt in so that you can collect them onto that email list. You also need to have a landing point with a functional opt-in where they can put their email and begin an automation sequence to deliver this freebie or incentive offer. So this stuff needs to be functional. So when they hit that landing point, when they put their email in, it goes to a list, it's being collected, all this stuff works together. It's very important that you have your tech functioning so you're not missing out on an opportunity to follow up. Now you need complimentary content on Instagram that's gonna promote your offer, so that link and profile. So what are you posting on Instagram? Again, I said, I don't, I don't wanna tell you what you need to be posting on Instagram, but I do wanna tell you that you need to be matching your content to an audience. So if you know who your customers are, the easier that's gonna be. But it only makes sense if what you're posting complements the offer that you have put together, because that's gonna increase the amount of people that are clicking that link in your bio, or that are allowing you to DM them and give them that offer, that offer. So you wanna make sure that whatever you post, again, this isn't a webinar or training about what you need to post, it is matching the right people, so the type of people that are likely to be your customers, it's matching their interests, and then you're making sure that it's complementary to the offer you put together. So I might post Instagram marketing tips on my Instagram, and then I'm gonna tell people, hey, link in bio for my free training, which is this. You wanna be doing the same thing, but with your business, with whatever it is that you're selling. Okay, so where do these Instagram ads come in? Because I told you guys I'm a strategist. Um, I'm all about Facebook ads and now Instagram ads. So you're probably going like, Okay, we've talked a lot already. We've, we've, really, we've really gone into this, but where do the ads come in? Well, we're here. We're finally gonna talk about Instagram ads. This is very introductionary level, but again, if you were working with me, I could help get these set up for you. But we're just gonna talk about what's possible and why I'm so in love with Instagram and Instagram marketing and why you're probably gonna be too after you hear this. So. Where Instagram ads live is in your Facebook ads manager. If you haven't found them yet, yes, in your Instagram app, there are different options for creating ads, but the majority of the ads you're going to want to create in the ads we're about to talk about live in your Facebook ads manager. So you're going to need to create two audiences. You're going to want to create two very important evergreen audiences. And one of those audiences is people who recently engaged with my Instagram business profile within blank date range. This is a very powerful audience. It is going to run an ad promoting your freebie or incentive offer to people who visited, liked, commented, viewed your stories within a certain date range. So you wanna have this set up so you're not only capturing them in kind of the organic traffic, but also what happens is they view your profile, check out your stuff, maybe they don't follow. Well, they go back to scrolling on Instagram and all of a sudden your offer is there. This is an ad you can run all the time, relatively low budget and be capturing people so that you capture leads every day and your list continues to grow every day. So you're offering them not your product for sale in this ad, but getting them on your list. Because the second ad we're gonna run is going to go to people on your email list who have opted in. So this is the custom audience of people who have claimed that original offer, and this is a selling ad. So this directs them, like I said, if you sell one-to-one, -one, so you need to consult with them, you need to get them on a call. 
um, you're basically promoting that booking of a call. If you're selling physical items or promoting those items to get them back to your store, um, what you want to be doing is only running the second ad to people who have already self-qualified by opting in to the first ad. I hope that this is making some of you excited about what is potential here, what you can do, because if you have these two ads and they're running every single day for you, all this other stuff that we've been talking about, it just becomes partially automated for you and you no longer have to be spending so much time on Instagram. So you can do all the other stuff and that's definitely going to help and make a difference. But if you put these two ads in, you create them as evergreen ongoing ads with a daily budget, a reasonable daily budget, you're going to be able to make this all happen automatically. So your time spent on Instagram is going to pay you back because if you're taking the time to draw traffic to your profile and get people on that list, then everything else is kind of taken care of if you have these ads in place. So we talked about what audience A needs to be. We talked about what audience B needs to be. Um, let's just review that. Audience A are the people who interacted recently with your Instagram content, and they're going to be given an ad offering them your freebie or incentive offer. Audience B are people who have already opted into that list, and they're being delivered an ad promoting your products and services, or so whatever it is you have for sale the end of the the pipeline of marketing here you're basically reminding them about your store reminding them about your most recent offer so these are strategic low-cost evergreen facebook ads i call them facebook ads because they're created in facebook ads manager you set these up you set them up as ongoing you choose your budget what you can afford and you let them run now you want to make sure that they are set up properly but generally these are low maintenance and they're high converting. So high converting, again, low CPC, low cost per conversion. So you're gonna start looking at Instagram as an entry point into a greater marketing funnel. So the end goal here is Instagram is part of your overall marketing strategy and it actually generates you new signups on your list and then you're also getting people inquiring and purchasing from you. Now, I've created this thinking really generally about what people need to know. Obviously, depending what kind of business you have, there are different points where we can tweak things. You can also become more advanced with how you do this as well as automating a lot of the growth and interaction on your Instagram using ads and other techniques so that your time spent on Instagram, again, is less, but your results are higher. So that's basically what I do for people. Um, you would have the opportunity to work with me. Um, so I'm able to help people grow their followers targeted by interest. So a highly qualified targeted audience up to hundred followers per day is what my clients see. I work with you to develop this lead capture funnel. So we want to get this system in place. So it just functions right. And then we create these other evergreen, sorry, I'm getting to the end here. I'm, I'm losing my momentum, but I want to tell you, we can create these evergreen Instagram ads, plug them into your ads manager, and get this up and running for you. And I can also work with you on your content strategy because a lot of people still are clueless about what to post to make this work, to attract that authentic, real, engaged follower. Somebody could be a potential customer. Um, your content strategy is something I can help you with as well. When you work with me, you'll never have to be spammy or selly. Instagram will just work for you because you'll have the systems in place. Again, I want to put an end to that wasting time, that dabbling, and get you some results, help you get new customers easily with this system in place for you. Okay, so we've reached the end, and I just want to welcome you to contact me. I just want to say, if you enjoyed this information, if this was useful to you, the next step here, as soon as I hop out of screen share mode, The next step here is to reach out to me and then I actually offer um, a 24 hour demonstration of how I would handle your Instagram. So Instagram growth and I demo to you what I do. So you want to sign up for that, get a 24 hour Instagram takeover. I will grow your Instagram for you 24 hours free on me. And then we book a call and we have a conversation and we see if it's the right fit. 
Um, I'm working with people on kind of a one-to-one -one capacity right now, so there's only so many spots available. This might be something that you want to try though, and so if you want to just apply now for that demonstration, that's the way that I start with everybody, is demoing what I do, and then we move into a conversation and we talk about working together and what collaboration was going to look like. I want to thank you again for watching this video until the end. Please send me some love on Instagram if you got value from this content, if this really helped to kind of clarify a few things for you, if you really feel like you now have something that you can go and start implementing. Let me know what you thought of this training, because again, it was training mostly. It was my leads and sales course kind of condensed a little bit, but also I added some additional points, some things that I really wanted to share that are going to help you, again, have a better idea of how Instagram can be used strategically for marketing beyond just posting and praying that something comes of it. So please reach out to me. Let me know what you thought of this video. Thank you again for watching until the end and sticking with me. I'm Brandi Peters. You guys have a great day. Bye.